In this comparative study, I will explore the similarities and differences of the narrative arcs between two coming-of-age films, Lady Bird, a 2017 film directed by Greta Gerwig, and The Graduate, a 1967 film directed by Mike Nichols. The book Coming of Age on Film by Anne Hardcastle et al. depicts coming of age as a discovery implicit in any moment of transformation. Indeed, the films The Graduate and Lady Bird both exhibit revelations in their journey to adulthood. However, the development of that revelation is what sets these two films apart. To understand that difference, we need to first explore the context of these two films. Both of these films take place in California, but they depict very different socio-economical, geographical, and historical contexts. The Graduate takes place in a wealthy upper middle class family and criticizes the middle class for its superficial and materialistic ideals. Plastics. Made in the midst of the Vietnam War, although never explicitly mentioning war in the film, it captures the political and social change from the growing dissatisfaction with the status quo and mirrors their anarchic mood perfectly. The film challenged the self-imposed censorship of Hollywood through its unconventional storytelling, featuring a hero that lacks purpose but speaks of radical skepticism about American values of ambition, vision, and drive. Would you mind telling me then what those four years of college were for? What was the point of all that hard work? You got me. Lady Bird, on the other hand, takes place in a not so well off family in Sacramento, California in the early 2000s, which marked an era of economic recession following the dot com bubble burst. The context of the film contrasts with the stereotypical representation of California, and the film is keenly aware of it as it begins with the quote. Anybody who talks about California hedonism has never spent a Christmas in Sacramento. In the film, we see the protagonist, Christine, struggle with her social class. That's something that rich people do. We're not rich people. She admires and fantasizes houses from wealthy neighborhoods. I have friends over all the time to study and eat snacks. Yet despite all the financial hardships in Lady Bird, Christine decides to go to university in the East Coast where it will cost much more to attend. And despite being financially stable, Ben is still dissatisfied with his life as he searches for meaning. The two movies seem to capture a condition of wanting what you can't have as the basis of rebellion of the protagonists. And the conflicting ideologies between the parents and the protagonist only adds additional character motivation. However, even so, in The Graduate, Ben does not initially act upon this conflict. Only after Mrs. Robinson seduces him is his equilibrium disrupted. Her character functions as an inciting incident that introduces Ben to the opposite side of his parents' values. However, he soon learns that this side is no better as he struggles to find meaning in his relationship with Mrs. Robinson. Mrs. Robinson, do you think we could say a few words to each other first this time? I don't think we have much to say to each other. Soon, Mrs. Robinson's character throws Ben into a new kind of equilibrium of debauchery. This is accentuated through the editing that blurs the passage of time. The film employs montages to show the repetitive nature of Ben's life. In these montages, there is no indication of passage of time, just repetition. And even when there are no montages, the editing sometimes connects non sequitur scenes, which doesn't provide context for the time either. The only time we get a hint of time is during the montage with Simon Garfunkel's April Come She Will song playing in the background. Only here do we get a sense of months passing by. April, come she will. When streams are ripe and swelled with rain, May she will stay resting in my Again. This equilibrium is finally broken when Elaine is introduced. Hello. Her character was a midpoint between the opposite constructions of his parents' values and of Mrs. Robinson's. Elaine understood what he was going through. I have to be rude all the time, you know what I mean? Yes, I do. 
Only at this point does Ben's character motivations become clear. Thus, the story now enters the rising action stage as Ben seeks to overcome external conflicts to marry Elaine. In Ladybird, the development of conflict is constructed differently. Ladybird, like you said, you would. Just, you should just go to City College. You know, with your work ethic, just go to City College and then to jail and then back to City College and then maybe you'd learn to pull yourself up and not expect everybody to do everything. Instead of another character disrupting the equilibrium, Christine acts upon her own intentions of leaving Sacramento to go to university in the city. She takes self-initiated steps to get closer to that goal. She throws away her teacher's grade book so she can lie about her grade. It brought my average up to a B. Okay. Unlike The Graduate, Lady Bird doesn't have an inciting incident. Instead, the film starts with the rising action and maintains that rising action stage until the very end. The rising action is divided into short scenes that weave together a web of subplots that presents the protagonist's journey to her ultimate goal. In these scenes, we see Christine's shifting attitudes that begin to build up to her final coming-of-age epiphany. She hates me. She has a big heart, your mom. Yeah, I'm scared of her. She's not crazy. She just, you know, she, she has a big heart. She's very warm. I don't find your mother warm. You don't. She experiments with different activities, friends and boyfriends. And just like Ben, it doesn't always go smoothly. She struggles to fit in with her new group of friends. Are we still friends? I mean, if you're still Kyle's girlfriend, then yeah, I guess I'll see you around. And she doesn't get along with her new boyfriend. But only after this experimentation is she able to appreciate what she had before. Perhaps her biggest realization comes after leaving Sacramento. Only when she gets to the city does she realize what Sacramento means to her. She stops calling herself Ladybirds as an act of rebellion and calls herself Christine. Christine? My name is Christine. Despite desperately trying to escape the Catholic school system back in Sacramento. You're not interested in any Catholic colleges. No way. She goes to church. A key sequence is at the end, where Sacramento is shown from her memory. Compare this with similar shots of Sacramento before she left, we can see that when she is still in Sacramento, she is the primary focus of the shot. This suggests her indifference towards her surroundings, but also how she doesn't belong. The street art occupies the whole wall except for the part where Christine stands, symbolizing her disequilibrium with Sacramento. However, when Sacramento is revisited in her memories, for the first time, the shot is not blocked by anything but the characteristics of the city itself, symbolizing that only when she is out of the picture can she truly appreciate Sacramento. Similarly, in The Graduate, Ben defies all odds to marry Elaine, and as Elaine sees how controlling and manipulative her parents are, she defies her parents and chooses Ben. But when they eventually leave together, their initial joy of rebellion is followed by a diminishing smile as they sit on the bus, uncertain of the future that they had chosen. These two films reveal something fundamental about the nature of youth in transition, about naivety, inevitable defiance, and the eventual epiphany of the short-sighted rebellion, perhaps at a time much too late. In two films with such contrasting contexts, we see the universality of wanting what we can't have. And lastly, we see the final component of a coming-of-age film, the protagonist's revelation of adulthood.